Hey guys, this is Evangelist Chris Michelson and this is Salvation Today. We've got an amazing episode for you today. I'm going to be in, uh, interviewing my friend, Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth, who God is really raising up in this hour to talk about what's happening with the coronavirus, with all the lockdowns, and how God is raising up a people who will bring in, who will usher in uh, one of the greatest moves of the Holy Spirit that we've ever seen before. It's going to be an absolutely amazing interview. This is part one of this uh, series where I interview Jonathan. You don't want to miss it. Please send in your prayer requests to info at chrismichelson.com because at the end of the program, we're going to pray for you and pray for your miracle in Jesus' name. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the broadcast. guys, welcome to this episode of Salvation Today. I'm so excited to have you guys joining us. We've got a very special program. As I mentioned earlier, this is a special program because we have my new friend, Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth, with us today. And uh, it is so exciting to have him with us. I'm excited to have you guys with us. And uh, thanks for joining me, Evangelist Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, it's it's really an honor to have you with. Uh, you know, we got introduced, I guess, just about a month ago, maybe a couple yeah. months ago. Dr. Rodney introduced us to each other, and just been following what you've been doing, and I'm super excited about how God's using you. Same with you. Great job at Teen Challenge last night. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Doing great. Yeah, no, it's so good. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you're in Pennsylvania now. Um, but you weren't born, were you born and raised in Pennsylvania? I was born and raised in, in Pennsylvania, right near where I'm at now. I'm, outs okay. I'm outside of Pittsburgh, and then we moved to Maine for a little bit. I went to Bible College in Rhode Island. Nice. I lived in Virginia Beach, and I'm, I've been back in Pittsburgh for going on 10 years now. No, awesome, man. And I love what you're, what you're doing. You do crusades, revival meetings everywhere. Um, tell me a little bit about what God has really put on your heart for uh, kind of your, your mission and vision. Your ministry. I uh, I never used to share this story because you sound like like you're nuts. <laughs> Any, anytime you hear people talking about angels, you know, like nine ninety percent of the time they're they're like <laughs> on the goofy side. So I used to never tell anybody, but then there's such like a harsh, you know. I I think to an extent, when people get into the ministry, you have this idea like I want to be a minister that nobody can criticize. Yeah. I'm going to wear a navy blue suit jacket and khaki <laughs> pants, and I'm going to stay out of and any... And a red tie. Yeah, and stay out of, like, any problem areas. So I, you yeah. don't want to talk about, like, an angel <laughs> talk to you or whatever. But the only angel I've ever seen is I was eight years old. My mother sent me up to change for bed. I picked up my pajamas, and there was an angel on the other side of the bed. The angel said, Jonathan, God has reserved you for this last period of time to be an evangelist. So I paid attention to that part, evangelist, which is why I, I, I like you, uh, because you don't meet in America or Europe or Canada, you don't meet a lot of evangelists. Yeah. Real evangelists. Or even people that, you know, there was a glut of evangelists in the 80s, 70s, 80s, yeah. and then the Billy Graham organization estimates there's less than 2,000 full-time worldwide right now. Wow. So, you, you know, you meet a lot of pastors, which is great, because pa pastors are very needed. But you, you don't, I don't even hear a lot of people call themselves evangelists. Fortunately for me, that's why I was interested in you, because I know, I know you, you don't come from a, a, a ministry family background. So, you know, when, when the angel said, God's reserved you for this last day to be an evangelist, to call men and women that are now in darkness into light, for soon it will be eternally too late. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. Pastor Rodney said, you should make, make a book about that encounter. Yeah. But how do you make a book? The whole thing was like 40 seconds. Yeah. So I would, it would just be like a lot of pictures and drawings. <laughs> but the angel said you, to be an evangelist. Well, everything in America steers you to youth pastor, 
worship leader, yeah. prophetic conference speaker. But as far as like somebody that goes after souls, like you, to go to, go to Teen Challenge, a drug rehabilitation center, and take that, you, you know, you're not going there because of the agreed to honorarium or they're putting you in a five-star hotel for the <laughs> yeah. week. To have a heart to go to a place where there's no financial incentive yeah, and really nobody's going to care that you went and preached there. Yeah. Obviously, you, you're different. Yeah. Where you feel, whether you're in Pakistan or, te- or, or Orlando, you want to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to people who have never heard it before. Amen. And once you get that call... See, it's one thing to feel called to be an evangelist because you meet people that feel called to be an evangelist. You check up on them 10 or 15 years later and they're, if they're still in the ministry, they're pastoring or doing something different because there is no, there's no flow. What Bible college can you go to? There's no denominational Bible college in the United States where you can even minor in evangelism. Yeah. There's not even an evangelism minor. Yeah. So they've, they've almost kind of reworked the five-fold ministry gift. Yeah. Bible says that their resurrection gifts, when Jesus descended, he ascended, and the Bible says he gave gifts unto men, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Amen. And I think one of the reasons you see a weakness, and I say I think to be kind, I know one of the reasons you see a weakness in the body of Christ in America and Canada and Europe is because people started to get their own ideas about ministry gifts. Well, we don't believe in a, an apostle. We don't believe. Who cares what you believe in? Yeah. The Bible says that Christ is the found uh, is is the cornerstone, and apostles and prophets are the foundation. Yeah. So, how without without that, you start chipping away at the things God gave. What did the Bible say? Those five gifts were given for the edification of the church and the built the building up of the saints and the edification of the church until yeah. we all come to per- perfection. Well, you start chipping away at that. You take apostle out. We don't believe in that. Yeah. You know You know how I know someone's not an apostle when they call themselves one. Well, pa- Paul called himself an apostle. Yeah. You know, I, Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. So from that logic, you think Paul, Paul was a fake apostle. There's apostles. Nothing God gave us in the Bible. The same arguments people use to say ministry gifts die out are the same arguments they use to say the gifts of the Spirit die exactly. out. Exactly. And you've seen denominations move away from that. The Assemblies of God used to ordain prophets, ordained ministers as prophets in the West Texas district. So what happened? You had apostle, prophet, now evangelist. Yeah. That's the next one on the chopping block. Yeah. Where you people say, well, I had, I had a guy tell me when I was speaking at a conference, he said, well, I, I believe an evangelist should function out of the local church. I said, so you believe Billy Graham lived the entirety of his life outside of the will of God? <laughs> you know, Reinhard Bonnke missed the will of God for yeah. his own ministry. He actually should have been the director of evangelism at a local church. Yeah. No, that's Come not on. in the Bible. Yeah. There was no church in, uh, w- when, when Philip went to Samaria, there was no church there. Yeah. You know, an evangelist is the sickle arm of the body of Christ to go into the wheat field and bring it in. So for me, it was easier, which is why I'm intrigued by you, because my father at least was an evangelist. So when I went to Bible college and you could only pick youth pastor, minor, pastor, minor, worship leader, yep. um, Christian education, yep. or counseling. Yeah. Those are like the five that replaced it. Me too. I remember I was in one class in Bible <laughs> school, and my, uh, my professor, who was the dean, he said, the day of people coming in mass to hear a speaker is over. Well, right as that was happening, Brother Bonke was having his meetings in Nigeria. So I pulled one up because somebody had sent me a video of the meeting. And I said, so how do you explain this? And, and played it. Yeah. And the whole class watched. He said, well, I didn't know that was going on. Yeah. There's a lot people don't know. But yeah. if, if you pay attention, yeah. you see... You, you can never get dragged down with these people that feel like God stopped moving. You know, you hear people say something like, I'm just praying that the Lord moves again. It's like, do you live in a cave? Yeah. The greatest move of God that has ever hit the planet is underway right now. Amen. Not only is a revival going to come out of this COVID lockdown. Yes. It's already beginning. It's already started. You know, it's interesting because we hear so many people last year, 2019, saying, 
oh, the greatest revival is coming. And people were prophesying about a great revival, a great move of the Holy Spirit, mass evangelism like never before. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit. And and every single one of them was like shutting their ministries down, shutting their churches down. And I found very few people in that time that were preaching faith, that were preaching the Word of God, that were preaching Psalm 91, healing the sick. I mean, very few people were still preaching the message that they had been preaching for months. Right. And that's when I, that's when I found you. And, and it was like a breath of fresh air. I was like, finally, there's somebody else out there that still believes like that this Word is accurate and it is still the Word of God. And you can stand on it. And you can stand on it. You can trust the Word of God. Well, you know, one of the things that, that uh, helped me, I've followed older ministers. Yeah. Lester Summerall, yeah. Kenneth Hagin, R.W. Schambach. Yeah. One of the things, I was talking about this with, with another minister who's older now. I said one of the things in following them is you see a mode of operation that works. Yeah. Because Brother Hagin preached during the 1957, 1958 flu outbreak that took more lives uh, per capita wow. than this one did. Wow. Then another one hit in the 60s, yeah. the same year as Woodstock, yeah. that took more lives percentage-wise than, than this one did. Wow. So when you follow, you know, Lester Summerall preached through the Great Depression as an evangelist. Yeah. So when you watch how those guys operate, yeah. you're, you're not just watching great ministries, you're watching a mode of operation that works whether times are good in the natural or whether times are bad in the natural. Yeah. I heard Lester Summerall say, when the Great Depression hit, which we never approached the Great Depression here, you know, where you were having actual bread lines in America. Yeah. He said the Lord gave him an instruction. Get out of the cities and go preach in the country. Mm. And don't go back to the cities till this is over. So he goes back, he goes to the country and preaches, takes an offering, the offering for the week is like 31 cents. And he said, no no nickels, all pennies. Because there was no money. Yeah. So the, he said, what do I do? The Lord said, build a pen on the outside of the church and tell people to give offerings like they did in the Old Testament. Nobody <laughs> has money, but everybody has animals. Wow. Bring the best of your livestock Come on. as an offering. He said, so it was the noisiest revival he ever preached. <laughs> because by the end of the second week, it was full of pigs and goats and wow. sheep. And you could hear them all. Yeah. At the end of that... Uh, revival. He hired a guy with a truck, loaded all the animals into the back of the truck, took it to the city and sold all the animals where there was a shortage of food. He said his ministry had the most extra money he ever had in the history of his ministry wow. during Very the great. depression because God gave him an instruction. Come on. And I think one of, one of the things that trips people up is they don't realize God always has a plan forward. Yeah. God never and I'll, I'll bring it up again. Anytime I hear somebody telling them that they, the Lord gave them a dream or a vision, that there's just a lot of calamity coming, and right now we need to just, we need, it's, it's a season where we kind of need to lay. I don't believe that because yeah. all God knows how to do is increase. Come on. Abraham increased in severe famine. Yeah. Isaac radically increased in severe famine. Yeah. They stopped up his wells and took his property and deported him. He dug another well and kept increasing. Yeah. And, and the Bible says, you are all children of, like Isaac, you're all children of the promise. So there is no slowdown Come on. with God. Yeah. God's not up in heaven going, hey, just take it easy until I get all this figured out. Yeah. So I talked to you before we, we put the cameras on. Yeah. You told me an instruction God gave you to yeah. do. Lord, what do I do now? I can't travel. Yeah. All my meetings are canceled. Yeah. No problem. Do this one thing, yeah. and you followed that instruction, and you increased, not decreased. And yeah. I haven't asked you, but I bet you... 2020 will end up being the best year you ever had in the ministry Amen. on every metric. Souls, money, Amen. partners, everything. And it was the same with me. The Lord gave me two things. Do this and this. One thing in the afternoon, one thing at night. Yeah. And it skyrocketed our ministry. Then the other thing, in being connected with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will show you things that are to come. Yeah. So, it, you know, you do crusades, and I do crusades. Well, when, when you have crusades, and your partners know you as a crusade evangelist, yeah. then they, what do they ask you when they say, Where, where's your next crusade? Yeah. Where are you doing crusades this coming year? Yeah. Well, I felt the Lord speak to me at the end of last year. This election year, A, focus on America. Don't take any trips overseas. <laughs> that was in the fall of last year. 
okay. that, that there's going to be an attack of the enemy against America in the election year. Don't so focus on America. Preach in America, and B don't plan any any uh, outdoor crusades on on public property because wow. we would always get city property. Well, no, no city's going to give you a permit right now. Right. So, I knew the Lord spoke that to me. So personally, I don't care how my partners feel. <laughs> I don't care how anybody. Where, where are you doing crusades, Brother Jonathan? So I did seven last year. Where are you going? No, not one. Oh, and then they all bristle. Oh, why 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 not? But. You don't seem so dumb now right. that the Lord gave you a mode of operation ahead of time. So one thing I've learned, Jeremiah 29, 11 lets you know, it's always a plan to prosper you. Yeah. It's never a plan to harm you. Amen. I mean, if you know, you know, we're facing where we could die. Watch the we part. Yeah. I'm not dying until I've lived a long, good life Amen. and fulfilled my ministry, according right. to the Word of according God. Word. Death doesn't get to pick when it takes That's me. That's right. I'll, I'll go when I'm done, yeah. and I'm not done. Amen. So... I know that uh, any Christian can hook into God's plan for their life. Yeah. And God doesn't care whether the Dow Jones is at 29,000 or 29. Yeah. If everything's burnt to the ground outside, it doesn't affect any of God's promises That's to right. your life. That's right. God doesn't say, well, listen, I know I said that. God always has a path forward. Yeah. And then if you are, let's talk about your, your, your father in the Lord, Brother Bonke, because I've thought about this several times. He's having the biggest meetings he's ever had in Nigeria. Then the leadership changes, and it's an Islamic, jihadist-friendly leadership. Yeah. And they ban him from the country yeah. for nine years. Yeah. And then it opens back up again, and what does the Lord tell him? I'm going to give you, in these next years, an accelerated harvest to make up for the time oh. that you lost, and that's where those big meetings come out of. Yeah. That's why I have a massive expectation that... These regulations are going to lift. Yeah. Nothing lasts for people. You know, people need to chill. Yeah. Nothing lasts forever. Even when Hitler came to power in Germany, he, he was in and out in six years. Yeah. The Antichrist will have a seven-year run, all less than 10 years. And I'm not saying it's going to take that long. And this is far less severe. Yeah. Things are going to open up. And when they open up, the greatest evangelistic meetings that have ever been held on planet Earth are going to be held one after Amen. another after another, even in nations that don't have any gatherings. I'm Amen. telling you, the Lord's gonna gonna do something to the enemy. He's gonna say, "You stop people from gathering." Yeah. In nations where they're allowed to gather. Yeah. So in return, people are gonna gather by the millions in places where they're not allowed to gather at all. That's right. That's gonna happen. Amen. I'm ex I'm excited about that, and that's what we've been talking about as well, Amanda and I. We've been saying this entire time. As soon as this thing gets done. We are going to be out there full force. And you can see the devil's trying to spread fear everywhere, chaos. People are worried. Suicide rates are going up. Prescription medication for depression, anxiety. Oh, yeah. All of that. It's going through the roof. And I truly believe coming out of this thing, as soon as we're able to, and even right now we're seeing it happen on our social media platforms, we're seeing people getting saved from all over the oh, yeah. world right now. Saudi Arabia, Iraq. I just led a, a Muslim guy to the Lord. He emailed us two weeks ago uh, from, um, he was from the, uh, he's originally from Sudan, living in uh, Uganda right now as a refugee in Uganda. Emailed me two weeks ago, said, I'm a Muslim, but I want to know how do I become a Christian. Right. You're seeing just an incredible hunger right now among people in the world that are beginning to open up for Jesus like never before. And I truly believe we are on the cusp. I even actually prophesied it earlier in one of the earlier tapings that we did today, that I believe we're on the cusp of one of the greatest, the greatest revival that we've ever seen in the history of the world. Hey guys, I just wanna to talk to you quickly about something that Jesus said that is so important for you and I to understand. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus tells this to his disciples when they were asking him about where he would go after he died. He talked about going to the kingdom of God and, and going and setting up a throne for them and setting up a kingdom for them. And one of his disciples came to him and said, Jesus, we don't know where you go or, or, or what you're talking about. And Jesus said this, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. They're, they said, where are you going? He said, I am the way, 
I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, in life, a lot of people think that there are multiple ways to God and that they can get to God many different ways. But Jesus Christ himself was very clear. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. My friends, Jesus Christ is the only one who can die for your sins. He's the only one who can give you eternal life. He's the only one who can forgive you of your sins because he is the only one who died for your sins on the cross. My friends, that's why I have confidence today to tell you Jesus is the only way to heaven because he is the only one who paid the eternal price, who died on the cross for the sins of the world, who died to set you free. He is the only one that did that, and he did it because he loves you. Friends, turn your heart over to Jesus today. He's the only one who can save you. And if you put your faith in Jesus, the Bible says that if we'll confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we'll believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Friends, that's a promise from God today that if you'll put your faith in Jesus, if you'll turn away from your sin, turn to Jesus and confess him with me today, I believe God will save you, he'll set you free, and he will give you eternal life. Not eternal life just to come, not in heaven one day, but he's gonna come inside of you today and give you a new life that is only found in Christ Jesus. Would you pray with me today? Just repeat this prayer after me and mean it with your whole heart. Just say this, say Jesus. Go ahead, just say it right now. Say it out loud. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I confess that I'm a sinner and I know that you died for a sinner like me. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all of my sin and unrighteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. From this day forward, I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with me, uh, I have good news for you. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. The Bible says the old is passed away and all things have become new. I wanna encourage you to begin reading the Bible every single day, begin devouring the word, start in the book of John. And then I wanna encourage you to surround yourself with Christians and begin to follow the word of God and begin going to church every single day that you can. And please, if you prayed with us today, please reach out to us and let us know. Send us an email at info at and just say, hey, I prayed with you today to receive Jesus. We would be so honored to stand with you and follow up with you in this new walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you. Welcome back, my friends. We want to take this time to pray over your prayer requests. Brother Jonathan and I have got them here. We want to take this time, lay hands on your prayer requests, pray over you. If you haven't submitted your prayer request, just lay one hand on the body part that needs a healing, and we're going to believe God right now for Him to touch you, heal you, bless you, and change your life forever in Jesus' name. Uh, Brother Jonathan, why don't you just start us out in prayer? You know, the Bible says in Job 42.10 that when Job lost everything, God gave him back double everything Come he on. lost. Whatever you've lost in your health, yeah. whatever you've lost financially, you need food during this time, I believe the Lord not only provides for your needs, but is going to give you the best end to a year you've ever had. Come on. Father, yeah. I thank you that your El Shaddai, Kitty. that everything we need and more is found in you, healing, provision, peace, okay. everything. I loose your power into their yes. home now. In the name of Jesus. Let every need be met. Every sickness and disease, I curse yes. it. The little children that are sick, yes. I command them to be healed. In, in Jesus' name. name. Jesus. Thank you for victory. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yeah, Father, Amen. we thank you right now for touching them, healing them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. All pain, go, get out. Be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. 
Amen. Pretty awesome. Yeah, Thanks for man. having me on. Yeah, thank you so much. Please tell us uh, where people can, can follow your ministry. Revival Today is the name of the ministry. How can they follow you? How can they get in touch with your ministry? I would encourage everybody watching, if you want to follow my ministry, change your mind and just stick with Brother Chris because he's a much better minister. And I say that honestly. Stay, stay, stay with Pat, Brother Chris. I'll be, I'm sure I'll be on again. Yeah, come on. You can go to revivaltoday.org, I think it's org, right? Com. Com dot, dot com. And uh, follow him on social media, YouTube, Facebook. Check the news every single night, yep. which we didn't get to mention. <laughs> But I love Check the News. It's been a blessing to me. Thank you. Just hearing some good news every yeah. night, finally. Yeah. It's nice, huh? It's nice. And that's at, what, some 11? Some days I had to dig to find some yeah. good news. <laughs> and that's at 11.45, right? It is, yeah. Every night. So you can find that on Facebook and YouTube. Um, but, bro, it's been an honor to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Until next time, friends, we love you so much. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey guys, Evangelist Chris Michelson here, and I just want to take a moment to tell you about what God has been doing through our ministry over the last few years. In 2005, we started Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the most unreached parts of the world. In fact, in that time, we've seen now hundreds of thousands of people receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In fact, over the last two years alone, We've seen now just over 1 million people receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior near the Middle East. And I just want to ask, would you consider partnering with us to help us financially to bring the gospel to these unreached parts of the world? On average, over the last two years, it costs us only 69 cents in our crusades near the Middle East to see one person receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yes, less than one dollar can bring somebody to Jesus. And I just want to ask, would you consider partnering with us in the gospel to help us continue to do these crusades all over the world and continue to broadcast our television show all over the world and continue to bring resources into the earth to see a great wave of salvation happen all over the world. You can partner with us financially by going to our website at chrismichelson.com. You can click the donate button there on our website and you can give a gift to help us continue to bring the gospel to the most unreached parts of the world. We need your help. Would you consider giving today? Also, would you consider becoming a monthly ministry partner on that same website, you can click the Recur Giving button there so that your gift becomes a monthly recurring gift. And we would be so honored to partner with you to bring the gospel to the most unreached parts of the earth. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.